All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, folks. Uh, and thank you for attending this session on what's new in HANA 2 SPS 07. Today's topic is the topic of administration and monitoring. My name is Jose Ramos. I'm a member of the SAP HANA product management team. And along with my colleagues, Amy, Dan, and Chetia, we'll be presenting the content today on this specific topic. All right, let's get to it. So what we'll cover today is we'll look at the HANA administration tools, and then we're going to go right into the new features that are found in HANA 2 SPS 07. The features are in the areas of administration and monitoring, user management and security, backup and recovery, the SAP HANA Database Explorer. And then we also have some demos that show the new features that you're going to see today. Then we're going to finish with some additional resources in a round of Q&A. If folks have any questions, you are welcome to add those in the, uh, the Q&A console uh, in the channel there. So we have folks who are monitoring that. So you can go ahead and do that if you have any questions during the presentation. All right, so let's start with the administration tools in HANA 2 SPS 07. So this presentation will mainly focus on the HANA Cockpit, which is the main administration tool to manage HANA 2 uh, SPS 07. And as a, as a way to recap what has happened in, in HANA 2, I think we all know that the HANA Cockpit was delivered initially when, when HANA 2 was originally released way back in, in 2016. And over the years, we continue to release versions of the HANA cockpit to deliver new innovations in the area of administration and monitoring. So here we are now in, uh, in 2023, where we release HANA 2 SPS 07. And at the same time, we are releasing the latest version of the HANA cockpit, which is HANA cockpit SP16, which is going to be the focus of this uh, presentation. Just keep in mind for folks who are new to the HANA cockpit that the HANA cockpit does have a different release schedule than HANA 2. And, and so that means that we released uh, the cockpit uh, in between versions of HANA. So for example, SP15 of the cockpit was released last September. Uh, and also when a new version of HANA is released, then we also release a version of the cockpit. So we actually synchronize our versions of the cockpit in, in HANA 2. And that's where we are now with SPS 07. And so for the foreseeable future, we'll then continue to release patches for the latest version of the HANA cockpit. And those patches always include fixes and security updates. And also along the, uh, along the new innovations or the, the release uh, schedule that we have for the HANA cockpit, as you can see here, at least in the past few versions of the cockpit, we continue to do a lot of investment in the technology. We continue to release a lot of new features, as you can see from this list. And for SV16, uh, that is no different. Okay, For folks who are upgrading from HANA to SPS06, to SPS 07, uh, you may not have installed the uh, the version of the cockpit that came in between those two versions, which was cockpit SP 15. So this can give you a list of the innovations that were delivered in that version of the cockpit as well. So if you're going straight from HANA 2 SPS 06 to SPS 07 and bypassing one version of the cockpit, that is fine. You can do that. Uh, just be aware that there's a lot of new features that were added between those two major versions of HANA. All right, so from an overview of the new features that are included in the HANA Cockpit SP16, these are the features that we're going to be talking about today. And in, these are the areas, so admin and monitoring, user management and security, backup and recovery. We're going to see a lot of demos on those features. We're gonna take those one at a time. One thing that's important to understand here is that HANA Cockpit SP16 includes the Database Explorer, but it's Database Explorer version SP15, okay? Uh, and as I mentioned in my last slide, that is a, uh, a, a version that was included or that was released just last September. So we're going to also see some of the, the features that were included in that version of, of Database Explorer. Uh, and also we are going to talk about the Database Explorer extension for Visual Studio Code and see a demo of that um, as part of this presentation. 
All right, let's take a look at the Cockpit SP16 new features. So let's start by looking at some of the enhancement that we've done in the database directory. So in the database directory, now you can filter the alerts by all priorities. In the past, you can only see high and medium priority alerts. We had requests from customers asking that they'd like to see all of the priorities just to make management of uh, a large landscape or large deployment easier so that you don't need to go into the, the individual database to see information in, in, in low priority type of uh, alert. So now you can all see them in, in one spot, which is the database directory. So, so this definitely does improve the workflow because as I mentioned, you need to navigate to individual databases overview page to see those. And then what happens is in the drop down box at the top of the database directory, then now you see the, 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 all the priorities displayed. Uh, and also we added a couple of new icons in the uh, in the alerts column, so you can see low and in information priority um, alerts there as well. So now you see them all, in, 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 and you can you can use the database directory uh, uh, as as a way to see all the alerts at a at a single glance for your entire HANA deployment. When it comes to workload class mappings. We have a couple of improvements in here. One of them is that we've added, or, or HANA actually, HANA server added a new session variable that is called the application source. And in the HANA cockpit, then you are able to now create a workload class mapping and use the application source as a session variable. Now this, this variable was added because it gives you better accuracy when you are looking to differentiate between other different workloads or different applications. It actually gives you more granular workload class uh, mapping, the ability to, to do more granular workload class mapping. Um, in the past, if you're using the uh, uh, things like the uh, the application name uh, or or the component name, you may find that the, what you're getting back may not be a, totally accurate depending on what the application that you are using. So we, the, the application source variable helps with that and will we'll give you a, another way for you to, to map your, your workload classes. Also, when you have, when you define a workload class and you've created a mapping uh, that is reliant on a base object, if the base object is, is dropped, uh, what would happen is that the workload class would get deleted, uh, the, the, sorry, the workload class mapping would get deleted. Uh, and, and that could be problematic when you have uh, a procedure where you need to uh, uh, drop and recreate those objects often. And a good example of this is when you're redeploying uh, HDI containers, then the procedures get dropped and they get, they get recreated right away. But if you have workload class mappings associated with that, then you would have to recreate those manually. So obviously that would be tedious in a large deployment. So now instead of uh, doing that, what happens is that uh, HANA has um, um, a new a new property called, uh, or a new property that we set to valid or invalid, depending of whether the base object is uh, available or not. Uh, so when the object is available, then in the HANA cockpit, you'll see a, a new column in, in the mappings view of the workload class, which is going to be set to true if, if the, the object is there. And if the object is dropped, then the is valid column then just uh, goes to false. Um, and, and, uh, and this is done automatically as well. So you don't need to change it. So if you were to recreate the object, then you would see that the, uh, the column that would now become back to, to true. Uh, and, and this can help a lot of time, especially when you have this type of situation when you are dropping and recreating the object. Looking at some NSC enhancements, the monitor buffer cache now has a new uh, a new metric uh, that's called the IO read size that is displayed in, in the buffer cache monitor, and this can help you to identify the amount of uh, IO that is spent in the uh, the, the NSC buffer cache. Uh, it, it gives you more accurate reporting of the the buffer cache size. And also it can help you to measure the impact of the buffer cache IO that uh, might be happening on the, on the SAP HANA system. So if you have a problematic NSC object, then you can use this to troubleshoot. In the buffer cache monitor, then you now see a new column called IO read size. And, uh, and, that, and also in the buffer cache history graph at, at the bottom of this application, then there's a new metric that is displayed in the uh, the time chart as well for the uh, the IO read size.
in the insufficient privilege details application. Now, this is the application that you use when to to um, to see what kind of authorizations are uh, errors you or, or messages you may be facing when you you get this type of error. So there's now a new section called passport information that is going to display things like the uh, the root context ID, the transaction ID, connection ID, and so on. And and this can be useful when you have authorization errors that are uh, that are triggered when you are trying to analyze a call sequence in a distributed landscape. So, for example, an SAP S4 HANA deployment. Uh, so you don't have to go and chase the information. You can now see it right from this application, which is what you want to see uh, when you get uh, this type of authorization error. Uh, you just paste the GUID into the application, and then you can see all the information about the error. But now you can also see the password information as well. Now, if the password information is is uh, the password information is not available, then you go into see a message that says there's no passport information available. When you now create full HANA full, full system information dumps, so the, the dump files, then a new option is available to collect the memory manage, memory manager diagnostic information when you when you collect the uh, the SFID files. Now, this, uh, this section will include values for things like the memory allocation limit, the memory pools, the inter-process memory, and a lot more. You can see an example here on, on a screenshot on, a, on, on the bottom right. And this is very similar or, or equivalent to the functionality when you collect the top file details uh, using the HTTP cons uh, command line utility, or if you use the alter system create runtime dump SQL statement. Uh, so in all that, uh, you could do that in the past, you can now do this now in the HANA cockpit as well by selecting that memory manager um, option when you are creating your, your FSID. All right, moving along to uh, user to continue with some security new features. The certificate store and the public key store now are able to display the comments that, uh, that uh, you define when you're creating a certificate uh, or when you're adding a certificate or when you're adding a, a public key. Uh, so now in those respective applications, we have options here to that you can uh, the, where you can see the comment and also where you can edit the comment as well and change that. Uh, so just a little bit more uh, or uh, uh, a usability type of, of new, new feature uh, that allows you to uh, manage the comments as well, which can be very important, especially when uh, you want to document why uh, you've chosen to make a change or if you added a new, uh, a new object in, uh, in your deployment. When you create audit policies, you can now select user groups when you're creating those. So the user groups are available, in, and then when you create or edit the policy, you can choose to add those. Now, this will add more control when it comes to the users that you want to audit, uh, especially when those users are part of a user group. Now, in the dialogs, you can see that we, we've added the ability for you to, to add uh, or, or add uh, user groups to the, the uh, audit policies. And it's important to understand that you can select to add both users and user groups at the same time for inclusion of a policy or for exclusion uh, in a policy. But be aware that you cannot add one type, for example, the users for inclusion, and then the other type, the user groups for exclusion at the same time. So it's got to be uh, both for inclusion or both for exclusion. Once you do that, the list of policies screen in there, you'll see that we've updated with a new column that's called audited, audited user group. And there's a tooltip as well that's going to display information about which user and user groups are excluded from the policy. So you can, once you define it, there's a way for you to see it at a single glance, what is uh, the user groups and the users that are being included in the policy uh, or excluded in the policy as well. Now, when you configure the audit log table, you can set it to use page or columns as global units. So in essence, what, what this feature is doing is that we are leveraging the NSE feature in the auditing functionality. Uh, this is turned on by default. 
by the way, in, in HANA 2 SPS 07. And what you can do is you can set the load unit for the audit log table to be page. Again, that's a default or column if you want to disable um, NSC there. And, and this provides you with a cost effect, effective method to save memory space because all the old audit log entries can be now kept on disk as opposed to having them loaded into memory. Uh, so this can save some memory, um, especially if you have uh, a very large uh, log table for your auditing. You can just keep that on disk by taking advantage of, of NSC. Now, when you create complete data backups, you can choose to set them with the option to be retained. This is now this is only available for com for complete data backups, by the way. So it's not available for incremental or differential backups. Uh, but once you set a complete data backup to be retained, then this is going to ensure that the backup cannot be deleted either by the backup catalog delete command or by any scheduled housekeeping task. For example, if you set up a backup retention type of policy. So. This helps you with the data recovery process because it's going to allow you as the operator or the database administrator to preserve your data backup uh, as a snapshot of a particular point in time without having the risk of uh, deleting the backup accidentally or, or through uh, human error. And, and so uh, whenever you try to delete a retained backup, you're actually going to see a message, uh, an error message that tells you that it cannot be deleted. And this option is also now available when you create your backup in the Create Backup dialog and also in the Backup Catalog app because you can choose or you can select to um, enable or disable the, uh, the option. Um, how does that look like? Looks like this. So this is when once you've once you created the backup, then you can choose to enable or disable the uh, the setting by just editing or looking at the, the details of that backup. And we have a button on the top right that allows you to do that. Also, it's important to understand that if you want to do this operation, then you need the appropriate system privileges. So for your own database, you need to have the backup admin uh, privilege. And then for your, if you want to do this for tenant databases uh, and the backup is performed using uh, system DB, then you need the database admin or the database backup admin system privilege. All right, so that's, that's was, that, was, that was a description of the new features that you can expect to see in HANA Cockpit SP16. Uh, be aware that for all those new features to work, you do need uh, an SAP HANA 2.0 SPS 07 uh, database uh, that, that is managed in the cockpit. If you have earlier versions of HANA, uh, then you likely will not see those features in the cockpit just because they're not available on the server. So just be aware of that. So at this point, we have a number of, uh, of demos to show you of the new features. So I'm going to now turn it over to my colleague, Amy, to do the demonstration. Thank you, Jose. And let me share my screen. So hi, my name is Amy from the SAP HANA product management team. And today I will be demonstrating some new features in SAP HANA Cockpit SB16. So the first we are gonna take a look at is the enhancements alert filtering in the database directory. So in the versions, the database directory was only showing the high and the medium priority alerts. So, and, sorry, so, sorry, I me. Mean, um, are you sharing? Because the screen is blank at this point. It says I've started sharing this, the screen, but uh, there's no... There's nothing that is displayed. Maybe try restarting that. Ooh, did, uh, did we lose Amy? Well, it looks like we might have lost Amy a little bit. Uh, we may have to go to the next presenter in a second. So let's just wait a second here.
All right, looks like Amy's coming back here. All right, Amy, not sure if you can hear us. Uh, I think you you dropped there momentarily. Uh, so maybe you can give that a try again, see if we can get the sharing going. Yeah, sorry, there was a glitch saying that my screen sharing is not working. So let me try it again. Can you guys see my screen? Says that it's starting sharing. Uh, yep, we can see your screen now. Thank you. Okay, yeah, sorry, I'll resume my demos. So I was showing you the enhanced alert filtering in the database directory. So when you click the drop down menu in the alerts, when you select the low alerts, you will only see that the database that has the low alerts. And with the alerts column on the table, you can also see that well, what alerts you got for the, each database with the new icons for the low and the information alerts at a single glance. And for the next feature, we're gonna look at the workload management class mapping. So when we create a workload mapping under the mapping details, the new variable called application source now has been added and this helps to work map the workload class more effectively. And you can use this with the equals or begins with and with the given wildcard. And when we have the workload class mappings, you will now see the new column co called is valid is now has been added on the table. And this mapping, we have a mapping with the object called WC base object. And the is valid column is true since the object exists. So if I open up the SQL console and drop this object and refresh the page, I should now then be able to see that the column is valid will change to false. And this feature is useful for the HANA deployment infrastructure as mentioned in the slide, because you don't want the mappings to disappear when you redeploy those HDI containers. And as you can see on the table that the is valid column now has been changed to false since the base object's been removed. And this will be revalidated once the object is recreated. And the next feature that we're gonna take a look at is the adding the comments to the public key store and the certificate store. And this is a small enhancement, but it's useful feature for the security admins to leave some notes for the another. So I have the certificate store app open and on the header section, I do now see that edit comment button has been added. And if I click this, I can add any comments that I, I would like to. And same thing goes for the public key store. You will now see that the comment column has been added. And by clicking this change button, you will add, be able to add any comments that you want to. And now that we've looked at the public key and the certificate store, we also have some enhancements on the auditing app. So when we go into the create audit policy, and I will quickly go through step one and two. Click all actions for now. And in step three, we're now possible to select one or more users or user groups for the audit policy. So that means you can include or exclude specific users in or in the user group. And you could also select both of the groups and the user groups to be included or the excluded. And as we mentioned, you cannot select one type to be included and the other type to be excluded at the same time. And this same feature will also be available when you edit the audit policy as well. And when we move on to the audit, audit trail tab, you can now configure the audit log table to use the page or or columns as the loadable units, which is effectively using the SAP HANA native storage extension in the auditing functionality. And by default, we're using the native storage extension, the page unit for the audit log table. And in the slides, we also did see that for the HANA native storage extension, the IO volume is now supported for the buffer cache monitor. So I will open up the buffer cache monitor app and on the buffer cache size and the buffer cache history graph, we now see that the new metric called IO read site has been added. And this 
helps in measuring the buffer cache IO impact on the SAP HANA system. And this can be used to troubleshoot any problematic NSC objects. And for the next feature, I would like to introduce you with the passport information in the insufficient privilege details application. So in here, I do need to enter the GUID to see the details of the authorized agent error that I got. So on the SQL console, I do have a simple statement to run and get the GUID for the error. So let me just copy and paste this GUID to the application. And now, along with the details to the problem, the new section called password information has been added and it displays the root context ID, transaction ID, connection ID, and much more information. And if these details are not available, you will still see the section called password information, but it will instead show you the message saying that there's no password information available. And now, we will now look at the retaining the completing backup. So I will open up the backup catalog app to show you the new retained feature. So on the top right, you will see the create backup button. And when you click this, you will notice that the retained option now has been added. So this option is only available when you select the complete backup type and it will this it will automatically disable when you click the differential or the incremental backup type. So on the backup catalog app, I already do have two backups, manual backups, and one has been retained and one has not. So you will notice that for the retained backups, if I try to click a delete button, it will give me a pop-up message saying that the retained backups cannot be deleted. And when you click on the retained backups on the top right, you will see the button saying the set to not retained, which means you can disable the retaining function. And the same thing goes for the not retained backups. On the same top right, you will see the button saying set to retained, which means you can enable the retaining function for the not retained manual backup. And for the last feature, I would like to do a demonstration for the memory manager details on the full system information dumps. So when we collect the diagnostic information from the runtime environment under the selected services, we now have the option to obtain the specifics for the memory managers. So I do have some collections that I have for the by only selecting the memory manager details. And you can just simply click the download button and it will download you the zip file and open the resulting trace file from here. And this concludes the demonstration of the SAP HANA Cockpit SP6's new features. And now I will hand it over to Dan. Thank you, Amy, for the great demos. Let me share my screen. Okay, so my name is Dan Van Leeuwen, and today we'll be discussing some of the recent new updates to the SAP HANA Database Explorer. The current version of the SAP HANA Database Explorer is 2.15. It has been available now for some months, so you may have already upgraded to this version. Oh, wait, hang on, I see there's an issue here with my sharing. Let me try that again. Okay. Hopefully that's all set now. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's take a look at some of the new features. Well, the, one of the first things that you might notice is that the menus that are uh, shown in the top right have now been changed to icons. And this uh, makes the application a bit more uh, similar to the SAP HANA cockpit. You might also notice that there's a new icon that will show you the details of the currently logged in XSA user. And this uh, is helpful, but when you're working with uh, single sign-on connections within the database explorer, and we'll touch on that a little bit later. There is also a, uh, a new feature into the statement library. So the statement library is a location that you can store your frequently um, accessed SQL statements and those SQL statements uh, are broken into two types. 
So user statements, those are ones that you actively can create, modify, or delete, uh, as well as system statements. Those are ones that are uh, just part of the database explorer. And there is now a new last modified column that is, uh, appears for your user statements. There is also a, um, a new icon in the catalog browser that allows you to multi-select multiple database instances that you have within the database explorer. And then you can select them to remove them. So this is very helpful for someone like myself where I'm frequently adding different connections to the database uh, explorer. Then periodically I want to remove some that I'm no longer using. A, and another uh, new feature in the uh, catalog browser that helps you organize your databases uh, are database groups. And uh, in this particular example, there is, uh, you know, there's a, a top level group called dev. Then within each sub level group, there's one database that is shown. And when I choose to, for example, remove the top level group, I now have an option of how to proceed. Do I want to take all the database uh, instances and leave them there, but simply move them up to the top of parent level? Um, or do I want to remove all the, the groups and the uh, databases? Within the SQL console, there is the, uh, op the option to run a SQL statement. Um, if you choose to run a statement as a background activity, for example, um, you might want to do that for a long running uh, SQL statement, or you might wish to choose to run a statement across multiple databases. And uh, in both cases for background or when you run on multiple databases, the uh, results are shown within the background activities view, which can be selected by uh, or toggled on and off with the icon on the bottom right of the uh, database explorer. And a new feature has been added for uh, these background activities that allows you to download the results of the execution. So in this case, an example was uh, run where I've run, um, I'm getting information about my database is by selecting against the uh, monitoring view M underscore database. I've run that across two different databases and then I've chosen to download um, the results of that file. And you can see that here on the right. And the results from lines uh, two till uh, 24 are for the uh, query against the first database. And then the results for the second query, or the query, the same query against the second database are shown from lines uh, 25 on. So here you can see, again, the, the date that the query was executed, the database that it was executed against, uh, whether it was successful or not, um, what was the query, who was it that, what was the database user that was used to execute the query, you can see some metrics such as the execution time, how much CPU time it took, and then details about the result. So here I can see that this query was run against an SPS 07 database. Within the SQL console, there are different built-in viewers depending on the, the data that you're trying to view. So there is a built-in viewer for HTML, for XML, for JSON, and a new viewer has now been added for uh, data that is in an ST geometry column. So in this particular example, we have different buildings, uh, SAP buildings in the Waldorf location. Um, and in the shape column, they have uh, just different uh, sort of a visualization of what that the outline of that building is. So if you right click on, uh, again, an ST geometry column, you can then view the, the data contained within it. So an additional, uh, point I wanted to mention that is if you did uh, use this within SAP HANA Cloud, uh, you would also be able to see that the visualization on an, a map instead of an empty canvas. Okay, for the uh, import and export wizards that are built into the database explorer, they now provide the ability to work with cloud storage providers. And these are available for three different uh, wizards. So the first one is the import and export data wizards. These wizards allow you to work with one table or one uh, view at a time. And you can, for example, export the data of a table into a, a CSV format. They also work with the import and export catalog object wizards. These wizards allow you to select more than one table or view at a time 
or even other catalog objects such as stored procedures or functions. Uh, the data can also be stored in additional uh, in, in binary format, which makes it a bit more efficient when doing large import and export operations. And uh, the catalog objects uh, import and export also provide the ability to include the SQL to recreate the objects. And finally, the ability to work with the cloud storage providers uh, is also an option if you're importing Esri shape files. And again, Esri shape files are um, a common storage format for spatial data. It's also possible to perform a uh, single sign on in the database explorer. Uh, using JWT. So this allows you to connect to your database uh, without having to specify the database username and password. So to do this, you would uh, first of all, go into the SAP HANA Cockpit Manager. And for that particular database, you could enable single sign-on. And then within the SAP HANA Cockpit, you can select a particular user. So in this case, I'm looking at user three, and under authentication, you can enable uh, JWT, and then you provide information about how to map uh, a particular um, XSA user to a database user. So in this case, when I log in as the cockpit had been, I'm going to make a database connection using user three's credentials. Okay, and then the final feature that I wanted to highlight today is the Database Explorer extension for Visual Studio Code. So this allows you to connect to both uh, on-premise databases or, in, or to HANA Cloud databases. Once you've got a database connection, you can browse the uh, catalog, you can look at the schema of the database, you can execute SQL queries in the SQL console. And again, it is available on the uh, Visual Studio Code marketplace. So with that, what I'd like to do is turn uh, this over to my colleague, Chathia, who will provide a demonstration of this new extension. Perfect, thank you, Dan. I'll just try and share my screen. All right, hopefully you can see that. So I'm just gonna go over and go to the extension marketplace. So I have VS Code open right now. And I'm going to enter in database explorer. And we'll see the extension pop up. And I'm just going to hit install on this. So the purpose of using this extension is that since many of you do use uh, VS Code on a daily basis, it makes the functionality of database explorer more easily accessible to you. Although it is good to use the web application for more complex things like debugging, uh, but this is here for you to use. And now that it's installed, we can see this icon pop up over here on the left in our activity bar. And I'm just gonna click on that to open up the extension. And we can close this over here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is add a new database connection. We're gonna add it locally. So in this form, we have to select the database type. So we can add an SAP HANA Cloud, connect SAP HANA or an SAP HANA user store, which would basically uh, retrieve saved credentials and fill out your form automatically. But we're just gonna go ahead and connect to SAP HANA on prem. And I'm gonna enter in the host and the port number over here. And I'm gonna connect to a tenant database and enter in some user credentials. And I'm gonna hit save password over here. If you don't click save password every time you open a new SQL console, you'll be prompted to enter in your password, but I'm just gonna save it so we don't have to do that. And here I'm gonna enter in um, some advanced options to set my current schema as hotel since that's what we'll be working in. And I can change the display name over here. Um, we're gonna enter in SP7. So this will kind of change uh, what you see in your connection list. So I'm just gonna add the database here. And we can see the connection has been added added successfully, so I'll just close that. And here in our database list, we have our database up here. And if we click on this uh, database, you'll see that the catalog is expanded with all of the objects. And to exemplify, I'm just gonna click on tables here. And as we can see, the catalog browser is currently filtered by the hotel schema as I've added it in the advanced options 
during the connection. If I wanted to change what I see in the tables, uh, I would be able to filter and select more of these or select you know, less of them. But we're just going to go ahead and stick with the hotel schema and you can click OK to apply your filters. So now moving on with the demo, I'm going to go ahead and open a new SQL console. And we'll see our SQL console pop up. And there are some run options here, some analyze options here. But what I'm going to do is open up a SQL file from my computer. Open that up. And it will be important here. And I'm just going to run this and then walk you through what I have. So the first line was to just select the current schema to show that I am indeed in the hotel schema, which is why I don't have to name the hotel as an identifier when selecting certain tables within it. The second result shows you the customer table. And as you can see, there are 15 entries in this table um, before I executed the next statement. So after that, I inserted an entry into this table, which I can see in result three is in here now with the 16th entry. Uh, looking at some of the other tabs in this section, we have messages. So messages shows you the statements that I ran with some information such as the elapsed time or the memory that was consumed. And then we can click on history. And again, it will show you a list of the statements that I ran along with whether they were successful or not. And something cool about this is if I go over here in the new line and I want to, if I want to just copy and paste one of these statements and reuse them, I can just click on the statement and it will enter it into my console for me. So that's the basic functionality of this extension. Uh, there are a few things that are useful about VS Code itself uh, and the function, the features in there to use. So if we open up the terminal, for example, we can access local files. If you have Git integrated, you can use that along with the extension. And using these toggle panels over here just makes it easy to organize uh, your workspace. And additionally, if some of you like to use uh, split screen and you want to use one side as a reference, you can just drag over your files as well and split screen your editors. So yeah, that concludes this quick demo on the SAP HANA Database Explorer Visual Studio Code extension. I'm just going to pass this back over to Jose to conclude. Thank you. All right, that sounded great. Thank you very much, uh, Chetia. It was a great demo. And now I'm going to take over the slides again. Uh, so let's uh, go over here. All right, so you can see my slides now. So we've gone through the description of the new features and we saw some great demos. Now let's finish the presentation by looking at some additional resources that you may want to take advantage of. So the SAP help portal, which is the access where you can find the documentation or the user assistance for the HANA cockpit or Database Explorer, for HANA in general as well. We have a number of links here that you can take a look at where you'll see information about the cockpit, just the admin guide. And we also have uh, a community wiki about HANA and in-memory computing that has a lot of articles uh, on, uh, on uh, the, the administration topics or things like how to set up single sign-up for the HANA cockpit, how does the security model works for the cockpit and, and, and those type of technical articles. Uh, we have a couple of blog entries that we want to highlight over here. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, uh, you may have skipped one version of the cockpit um, that was released uh, between uh, version of HANA 2 SVS 07 and, and SVS 06. Uh, so if you want to take a look at the innovations in the cockpit 315, which also includes Database Explorer SP15, then there's a blog posting uh, in there about that. Then if you want to read up more about what you saw today, then we do also have a blog post on uh, what's new in, in HANA 2 SPS 07, so the HANA cockpit SP16, which pretty much covers what we saw today. Uh, and this blog uh, entry was posted earlier uh, today as well. And if you want to take a look at uh, or go through a tutorial on the, uh, the Visual Studio um, Database Explorer extension that you just saw, then there's a link here for the tutorial. All right, so at this point, we're going to just quickly answer some of the questions that have come up on uh, on the chat, um, and, uh, and then we can conclude the presentation. So at this point, I'm just going to quickly look at uh, some of the chat in there. There was a couple of, a few questions that we saw 
Uh, one of them had to do about learning more about SAP HANA. Uh, we're going to post this uh, after the presentation in the chat, but basically um, there's, a, there's a link in sap.com that you can go into to learn about what is SAP HANA. So that'd be a, a good resource to look about uh, HANA in general, um, as well as what's in store. There's links there to the product roadmap as well that you can look and see what upcoming innovations we have in store. Uh, for for HANA um, uh, on premise uh, and also for HANA Cloud as well. So so folks should be aware that there is a HANA Cloud offering as well, um, and and then you can take a look at the information for those offerings uh, in there. Um, useful in case you want to upgrade or or move from on premise to the cloud, or if you're running a hybrid environment with on premise and the cloud. There was another question as well about more technical nature about the application ID. You probably saw this when we were looking at the workload classes earlier. Uh, and basically, the application ID is usually something that is defined by the application and is and it, uh, transferred in the connection to the database. Uh, pretty much any client server type of application works that way. And we just pick that up and display it. Um, so some, some applications um, document what the ID is. Uh, it could be a client ID. It could be something that it was coded in the application. Or it could be something else. Um, that's really what we, we display, and you can use that to define a workload mapping, uh, workload class mapping. And I believe those were the questions that we had. If I go back to um, quickly the uh, what we had in in, in, in YouTube, uh, yeah, I believe that is it. Uh, for now, so at this point, then um, we're going to finish the presentation. So, I'd like to thank all the presenters today, uh, Amy, Chetia, and Dan. Uh, so, thank you for presenting the uh, the new innovations and the demonstrations. Uh, thanks everyone in the call for listening to us, and uh, hopefully, you learn something new today about the administration and monitoring topic in SAP HANA. Um, and at this point, uh, we are going to then conclude uh, the call. So again, thank you very much and have a good rest of the day.